Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. I hope you are all doing very well today. Today is day three of having my nephew in the house and if I turned this camera around this room looks like an eight-year-old eight-year-old exploded in it. So there is so much stuff behind me or behind the camera it is ridiculous but it has been super fun. He has been a joy to have and I've actually talked him into doing a video on Saturday with me where he's going to talk about the books that he's been buying for himself on his visit to, to me. So, so far I think he's bought seven books and there are there's at least one more that we have to get because we didn't get the right number in the series. That's can't happen. You know that can't happen. So we got to go pick that one up and he's been going to every bookstore that I go to and at least finding one thing and bringing it home. So that's really cool. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to kind of steal um, Mercedes over at Mercy's Musings idea. She has done some videos where she has picked five books from her TBR that she thinks she's going to give five stars to. Now, she's already done this once. She did a video where she talked about the five books from her TBR that she thought she was going to give five stars. She read them, and then she did a follow-up video and <laughs> admitted a lack of success in those five <laughs> star reads. They didn't work out the way she was hoping, um, which I found really endearing because I know we have all been super excited and we think we're going to love a book and it just doesn't happen. And there's kind of a sense of a disappointment, but it's also a live and let learn moment. Um, so she did another video where she went through and she picked five more books. I think she actually has more than five on the list, some extras as she calls them, but um, where she did a little more research before she picked them and she kind of thought that it would be fun if other people did it and I thought it was a great idea. So I went through my shelves, not as scientifically as she did. Um, if you watch her second video, which I will link below, where she links her first two videos, um, you'll find she did a whole lot of research. I didn't do that much research, but um, I definitely picked five books that I've been super excited to read that I just think hit a certain sweet spot for me, and that in the end I'm going to give five stars to. And uh, what I'll do is I'll read them throughout the rest of the year or the next few months, and then I'll do a follow-up video where I talk about what I did rig these books on um, and how the reading went. The first book I put on that list is Chemistry by Wiki Wing. Now, this book was uh, mentioned and recommended on the Book Cougar Cop podcast by Ann Kingman of Books on the Nightstand fame. And I have been excited to read it ever since I heard about it, and then I was able to get it in my Book of the Month Club. This is the story of a Chinese-American uh, postdoctoral fellow who is at Boston University. She is doing her research, and her research and sort of her scientific career isn't going the way she or her advisor or her co or co-students or her parents thought it would go. She's also engaged to be married, and she's just not sure what she's going to do with her life. Um, because it's not going the way she expects. So she just decides to make some choices to figure out what she really wants. Now, it's a slip of a novel. It's not that big at all. But I think, I love that idea. Berkeley's in the room. Sorry about that. Um, I love that idea of sometimes we always think this is where we're going to be and where we wind up is different. And it takes a lot of courage to make that choice and change. So I think that speaks to me a lot in this book. So I think that's why it's gonna be a five-star read for me. That's Chemistry by Wiki Wing, and I'm super excited about it. Now, I just hauled this book not that long ago, and that's How to Be Human by Paula Cocosa. And this book, I just think the premise sounds really interesting, and I don't have to go too much into it to kind of tell you why I'm hooked, but it's about a woman who comes home one day and finds a baby on her doorstep. And she kind of in her mind believes that this fox that she's befriended um, has dropped the baby off for her because she know the fox knows she needs it. But she also knows that her neighbor has been going through some postpartum depression and maybe she dropped it off. What really brought this baby to her door? It's about a woman who is internalizing and analyzing herself as well as this sort of mystery of how this baby showed up and also this relationship with this fox that she has in the garden. And it had, I don't know where I saw a review of this, I'm totally blanking, but someone I know read this book and really, really recommended it. And it kind of just, for me, has been in the back of my mind ever since I purchased it. And that's How to Be Human by Pollock Coza. I'm excited about that one. 
The next book I'm super, super duper excited and almost 100% sure this is going to be a five-star read is The Changing by Victor Lavalle. And now Victor is, um, how do I describe him? One, I'm following him on Twitter now and I totally, totally am enjoying him. I wanted to tell you something. Yeah, he teaches at Columbia University. That's what I wanted to say. He has such dapper style too. Look at his photo. Yeah, I love his style. So this is the story of a man and his wife who have their first child. And his wife goes through postpartum depression. And one day the baby and the wife disappear. And he has to go hunting for them. And in that time, learns stuff about his wife and his family and his past. And sort of pieces it all together. It's a kind of a retelling, retelling of the changeling myth. Um, or fairy tale, I guess, is more of a better um, phrase. And one of my favorite authors, Tiari Jones, recommended this book on Twitter. And I love Tiari Jones. And so I was super excited to pick it up. I, I really like when sort of a lesser known fairy tale that we don't see over and over and over again kind of gets a retelling in a different sort of setting. And if it's done well, it can be super, super powerful. So I'm super excited about this book. Everyone I know who's read it has really loved it. And I think it's going to be there. So that's The Changeling by Lichter, Lichter, Victor Lavalle. Having one of those days, guys. I'm sorry. Now, the next two books I am putting on the list are the reason I say this might go longer into the year is because I kind of feel both of these books need to be read in the winter. They just have a winter feel to them. Um, so that's kind of why I'm saying they may be read a little bit later. And the first one is Midwinter by Fiona Melrose. And this really got on my radar when Simon of Savage Reads um, reviewed it on his blog post. I will link that blog below um, if you guys want to read it um, as he was reading it for the Bailey's Long List. This is the story of a um, father and son who have sort of a strange relationship. And I'm going to read you the back because I can't catch it as, as, as well. Um, there's a short little quote. It says, For ten years I shirked the memories. I always felt them scratching at the darker corners of my mind, still feral. But sitting on a tree stump in the gathering dark, all of it, the space, the fear, the sorrow, all seemed to find me again. It was as if the past ten years I'd only been standing still, and I was back in a mess with a boy who only sees ghosts. And I know it has to do with the death of the wife who was very, very important to both the father and the son and um, their loss that they haven't really talked about, I think, until the, until the book. So I think that sounds fantastic. If you, I mean, Simon's review is raving um, and I think it just sounds beautiful. And this is a, a naked hardback and it is absolutely gorgeous. So that's Midwinter by Fiona Melrose and I'm super excited about that one. And now last but not least is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I've actually had this on my shelf for a while but again I feel it's set in Russia in the snow and I just don't feel like you can read a book like this in the summer. But I do know that my friend Richard over at Richard Reads read this book about a month or two ago and he really loved it. So um, it's definitely been still on my radar. This is a retelling of a Russian fairy tale um, about a community where um, a family and the mother have been making um, sacrifices aren't, isn't the right word. They've been making, what do they call them? What's the right word? They, they um, offer up tributes to these spirits and the spirits keep their community free. Well, the mother passes and the father marries a new woman who doesn't believe in this and doesn't keep up the tradition, the tradition of um, giving presents to these spirits and things start to go wrong. And it's supposed to be very atmos atmospheric and I am really super excited about it. They, actually, I think it's out in paperback now, and I think the paperback is going to be easier to read, so I may go buy a second copy. But I think that it sounds beautiful, and I love the idea. I'm kind of obsessed with Russian fairy tales. I think when people retell them, they always have sort of a different angle that is super interesting and can add real depth and texture to a novel. So, um, and I think this is a debut. And you know who else raved about this book? Anna. Um, I can't remember her title, her her um, 
channel name, but she really, really liked this book last year, and she wanted it to be on the Bailey's short li or long list, and it wasn't. But that's um, The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. So those are my five books. Those are the five books that I think I'm going to give five stars to. Have you read any of them? Would you think they're five-star reads? Um, if you had five books that you would be putting the, uh, from your TBR, what would they be? And would you... Um, like to tell me because I'd like to hear about them. If you've read any of these, let me know. Um, I will link Mercy, uh, Mercy, Mercy Musing, Mercedes uh, video below so you can kind of take a look where she talks to people about doing this. There have been some blog posts about it that I've read. It's super exciting, guys. And um, I would love to hear from you. If you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. You know I love having you around in the conversations we have. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you. Subscribe. I'm glad to have you. And I hope you like uh, this video. And I will be talking to you guys probably on Saturday with an eight-year-old. So I hope you have a good rest of your week. And we'll talk soon. Happy reading.